try to look here. The show? Yeah, nice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome everybody to the AAPI uh, Google Hangout as part of the Fast for Families calling all APIs to escalate in action, calling on Congress to pass uh, comprehensive immigration reform. We are joined live as the uh, Fast for Families bus across America is moving across this country and connecting with the American people, and we're so excited to be able to join you all today online. Um, here we have uh, many great folks to be able to, to really have this conversation that we've been wanting to, to have. Uh, for a very, very long time, and so we're glad to do this. I just want to introduce all the speakers on today. We have Eliseo Medina, who is our Faster Families core uh, and our leader immigration movement. Uh, we have DJ Yoon, who is yeah, yeah he's the executive yeah. director already and now they're embarking this journey across America. DJ Yoon is on the northern bus while Ellis Sale is on the southern bus. So there are two buses moving across America and they're rejoined together. I just want to in uh in DC on April 9th is where the, the bus tour will end. We are also joined by our amazing local folks and uh, gearing up for the events that are coming up tomorrow uh, as a way to engage and this is the whole purpose of this bus tour. Uh, we have the uh, president of uh, uh, API vote in Michigan, which is Teresa Tran, along with Maria Adams, the social director of the Asian American Le Legal Advocacy Center. So thank you, Laura. She'll be joining in a moment, and we're so excited to have her as well. Uh, so first uh, oh, uh, with the man who really needs no introduction, and as you have heard already with the news, that he's been in the news, and but when, because we are determined, we're not going to give up, it's not ever going to be over until immigration reform is done, but I also want to thank all of you all right, sorry about that, everyone. Um, it looks like the Southern bus is having a little bit of um, some technical difficulties. Um, they should be coming back on very shortly. So I'm not sure what we sort of had a little technical difficulty here, so I'm not sure how much you missed, but let me just say we are going to win immigration reform, not a matter of if, a matter of when. But I also want to tell you how blessed I am you know, beginning uh, when Alabama passed a horrible law against immigrants and we went to South Korea to speak to the Hyundai shareholders meeting and DJ went with us and he helped organize support in Korea for us. Uh, I've never been to Korea and he was a gracious host. He uh, made sure that everybody in Korea knew what was happening in this uh, in the United States and how it mattered to them as well. Then following up, you know, uh, I participated in many of the lobby days of the API community in Washington, D.C. And then finally at the National Mall, when DJ uh, joined me in, uh, in the fast, we spent 22 days fasting, thinking, talking and strategizing, and sharing our stories. And I feel like that was a wonderful experience for me, an opportunity. I want to say to you, DJ, you are my hero. Thank you so much for everything you do for our community. And then, of course, you know, we have two wonderful ladies that have joined us uh, on the Southern Bus, yeah. Diana and He Ju, you know, who uh, they're just jewels, son un tesoro. And I want to thank you so much for being a part of us because I think you have raised the immigrant rights debate to a new uh, new heights. You are being heard and you are making the case that this is not a Latino issue. This is an issue of America. This is an issue of all of us because we come from every part of the world. 
and we are coming together, we're united, and we're saying the time for immigration reform is, is now. So just to end, let me just say, now's the moment when you're winning is the time to put more pressure on, not the time to let up. So we're on this bus tour. After the bus tour, we're going to keep fighting until we win. For now, we're fasting every Wednesday. Join us. Tomorrow is our fast day. Today we had wonderful Mexican food, but tomorrow <laughs> we fast, and every Wednesday for, uh, for Lent, and then we are getting postcards, and we're all going to go to Washington, D.C. on uh, April the 9th. Join us. Uh, we're going to win. You know, together there's nothing we cannot accomplish, and if we all do something, that will let up to a huge, powerful moral force that we're going to, that will lead us to winning once and for all immigration reform. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, DJ. Thank you, all of you. Uh, love Thank you. Looking forward to continue working with you. Thank you. Thank you, um, So at this time, Eliseo, as we're moving through, and there are many activities that are happening every day um, at, at each and every stop. As of right now, we're in the middle of meeting with the community, local community here. Um, uh, in Lakeland, Florida, and they just be able to host us and give us a great meal. Um, so, and LSA was in between all of that mix, and we're about to embark on a on a tour around this community area, visiting the different workers and the strawberry fields here. Um, so, every day it's been different, a variety from press conferences to community meetings to community tours. But at this time, I really want to take a moment, take a pause just for a moment, as you've heard from LSA. Uh, please continue to tweet. The hashtag is act, fast, and pray, and those are the three things that we've been doing uh, for fours as part of Fast for Families. Uh, please do so. If you want to tweet at Eliseo, he is a huge, huge uh, Twitter uh, uh, master. Uh, anything is tweetable for him, so please tweet at him of SCIU uh, underscore Eliseo, E-L-I-S-E-O. So once again, SCIU underscore E-L-I-S-E-O. So tweet at him using the hashtag act, fast, pray. Uh, so at this time, I really wanted to introduce uh, the other gentleman who's been the fierce fighter in this, and he has resounding amount of energy and has been a huge leader for us in the Asian American Pacific Islander community. Uh, please welcome the Executive Director of NACASEC, DJ Yoon, on the Northern Bus. Yay! Hi, everyone. Uh, it's really nice meeting you all, and thanks for your concern uh, and support. Uh, today, uh, we are in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and this is our 13th state that we are visiting. Uh, it's been five weeks now, and it's been very emotional, uh, but also very inspirational. Uh, because every city we visit, uh, we see and we hear uh, people suffering. Uh, I remember uh, when we were in Illinois, uh, we met uh, Michael, he's a Filipino American, and he shared his story that, you know, one of his uh, aunt uh, has been, who is a U.S. citizen, has been waiting 23 years uh, to be reunited uh, with their family member. I also remember uh, meeting 16 years old high school student in Vancouver, uh, Washington, she shared her story that a year ago, uh, her father was deported. Uh, her father was not a criminal. He was a hardworking father and then husband. And he was uh, driving without driver license, but he was uh, arrested by police and then he was transferred to detention center. And then that's how he was deported. Uh, this 16 years old high school student uh, was sharing her story, how hard it was supporting her mom, single mom, but also taking care of her nine years old sister. Uh, but one thing that really breaks her, her heart is every day, uh, her nine year old sister look out the window and ask her, when is daddy coming home? So this is a struggle and people's suffering that we see every city every day and we have to stop this crisis. But also at the same time, uh, we meet so many great people, so many people who are committed, and they never give up, and they are fired up, really, because they understand we have a crisis, people are suffering, and we can stop this uh, crisis. 
to me, it seems like you know this hard journey, very emotional journey, make us more stronger and make us to be more united. You know, even when we were in uh, South Spain yesterday, when we had a march in front of the Congresswoman Woloski's office, we had a 91 years old senior who came to join our rally with her worker. A few days ago, we met Dreamer, Hector. His father was deported five years ago. Now he got DACA. Now he is working 40 hours a week. He's a full-time student, but also he's a really strong activist. He's been talking to his friend about need for immigration reform, need to stop the deportation. He's been meeting with the Congress members often. He even you know, approached the, to the Congress member, had a really sat down meeting with him, and he shared his story. And then Congress member Lokira really kind of understood the need for immigration reform, and then he expressed, we, we, we cannot deport people like you. So I think we see many people, many communities, especially non-immigrant community. When we were in, you know, Wisconsin, we met, a, you know, a, a father who's a fifth or sixth generation of uh, Irish American. He shared his story. You know, his mother was from Ireland. His father was from Sweden. You know, even though he's not an immigrant, he hear and then he understood, understand what we are going through, what people are suffering is about. So he came to our event to show his support. So I really believe, and as day by go on, uh, I believe we can really make this immigration reform happen soon uh, because America is with us, our community is with us. Regardless whether they are immigrant, non-immigrant, from children to senior, everybody is with us because they understand immigrant, we are the workers, you know, we are the teachers, we are the you know, neighbors, we are the church member, we are part of this country, this is our home. So more than any time, I really believe we are very close to stop the deportation, to pass the immigration reform, to fix the broken system so our family can live with dignity and respect and we can keep the family together. And thank you so much for all your prayer, fast, and your support. We are here together. Thank you. Thank you so much, DJ. Um, it, and thank you so much for sharing the stories. And this is exactly why we continue to do what we do. And uh, I know that you put your body in the line. And you. And during that time when you fasted for 22 days, those are the stories that really fed your spirit to continue on. Um, so thank you so much for sharing their stories. And along this route, too, Hiju. Uh, Yoon, who's uh, who not related to DJ, uh, from KRC has joined us on the Southern Route for a few days, and um, and I know that for the both of us, it's been uh, an honor to be able to 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 meet with API representatives and actually um, uh, API uh, folks who live <laughs> in the South. And we Hi, are joined. DJ. We are joined by Christian Avila. Um, he is also another core faster on the Southern Route, along with Eliseo. He fasted for 22 days and represents Mi Familia Bota. Uh, so the two of them have been really the faces on the southern route, and he just wanted to join and say hello to everybody. <laughs> um, so to continue on, I just want to take another pause for a moment. This is our Twitter break right now to really uh, ask folks to tweet at DJ, at DJ Nakasek, D-J-N-A-K-A-S-E-C. He's also been an avid uh, tweeter as well, uh, posting pictures and... and uh, his own quote today. I, heard, I saw you tweeted early this morning about how rainbows need immigration reform too, because we're all rainbows and we can't separate rainbows or the colors. And I think that's what he tweeted today from Kalamazoo, Michigan. So please tweet at uh, DJ um, and send your questions in with the hashtag #ActFastPray. And let's get it trending worldwide because uh, this is what we need to do is to continue to escalate our API voices on this issue. So I want to take this time as we are anticipating Congresswoman Judy True to join us. Uh, I really want to turn out to the local folks who are, have been the anchors and, and really the heart of this bus tour to be able to help us put in this event because without them we wouldn't have a bus tour. And I just want to turn it over first uh, to Teresa uh, to tell us a bit more what's happening on the ground um, and, and as you're anticipating the Faster Families event. Yeah. So Teresa? Thank you. Um, so first of all, I'm really excited. Uh, DJ, nice to meet you uh, virtually. Uh, 
Uh, and we'll get to meet you tomorrow in Lansing. So we're so excited to have um, such a fierce advocate in the AAPI community who's like really like holding it down for us nationally. And uh, you know we're doing everything that we can uh, on the ground locally. And so um, we are working to mobilize Asian Americans because oftentimes, uh, as others have mentioned, this has been uh, we've we've been fairly quiet in this this conversation on comprehensive immigration reform. And I think we need to continue making noise and building up from the ground. Um, you know, we hear a lot of stories about people being really afraid to, to speak out, especially in our communities, because of, you know, the fear of rocking the boat or um, just just not wanting to make a make make noise or disturbance or uh, anything like that. And you know, as someone who is the daughter of refugee and immigrant parents, um, I know firsthand how important it is that we have a good system that. Uh, that unifies our families, that is, is equitable and fair. Um, if it were for uh, sibling reunification, my dad and my mom would not be here today and I would not have the opportunities that I have had uh, in Michigan growing up. So we're really excited to be a part of this bus tour. Um, DJ's in Kalamazoo today on the west side. Tomorrow we'll be joined uh, in the capital, in the state capital in Lansing, um, where we'll be holding press conferences with some of our partners and then doing congressional meetings. Uh, tomorrow, excuse me, Thursday we'll be in Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, with other partners uh, organizing a rally with college students at the Grand Valley State University uh, and then a community meeting at one of the local faith-based organizations. Um, and so, you know, for, for us, in, you know, two-thirds of our two-thirds of our community is foreign-born and it's imperative that we are a part of this conversation. It's imperative that, um, you know, we are part of the conversation on reform, and it's it's not just uh, important for us to talk about, but for us to really take action. We really need to have some movement and and call our uh, call our elected officials, call uh, our friends and families, and encourage them to do the same. Because the time is now. We can't wait. We have to really work to make this happen. We really need immigration reform right now. Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> And thank you. And we're excited that you'll be able to welcome DJ and the whole Northern Bus crew along with Rudy Lopez tomorrow. And actually, I myself and Hedju are also anticipating our our uh, or welcome or be able to to meet uh, the folks in Atlanta, Georgia. So I want to turn it over to Maria Adams to speak a little more about uh, what we can anticipate tomorrow and the work that's happening on the ground. Thank you, thank you. My name is Maria Adams and I'm the Associate Director of the Asian American Legal Advocacy Center. Um, I don't know if you all know this, but the South has the fastest growing Asian population, Asian American population in the country. Um, Georgia also has the largest foreign born population in our region. So with that said, this is the time now to enact, you know, a broad, humane immigration reform that advances inclusion, fairness, and equality for all immigrants in all communities. And, you know, I myself am the daughter of a Filipino immigrant. And you know, our faces come in a wide variety, wide ranges, and when you said that rainbow comment, you know, it really hit home because, you know, my family is as diverse as possible, come from all corners of the world and all parts of the, the United States, and this is an issue that is, you know, we have to be inclusive and really think about what our communities need and what our communities want, and in our efforts, we are going to support the Fast for Family campaign. When you guys get here, we're going to be hosting a dinner from um, with our 9 to 5 partners on the evening of March 26. We'll be hosting a fast and then feast, so we're asking all of our people to start fasting at 7 p.m. today until 7 p.m. tomorrow, and then we have a nice feast for you guys. You know, hopefully it's better than the Mexican food that you guys had today um, at a restaurant here in Georgia, the Yang Jing restaurant in um, Georgia. It's located on Buford Highway um, in Doraville, Georgia. Um, we're hoping that we can not only eat dinner together, but share stories, have a dialogue on, you know, how immigration has affected your personal life, or people that you know of. Um, and we want to share these stories across the board, um, social media, to the press, so that we can put you know, all the different faces to this issue. Um, we've already been collecting these stories with our We All Matter campaign. 
Um, if you go to our Facebook, ALAX Facebook, and our Twitter feed, you'll see different stories from a wide range of people, everything from um, police officers to um, faith of faith community leaders to, you know, regular old, you know, anybody's who are sharing their stories with um, with ALAC and sharing their stories on immigration. Also, um, when I guess the bus will be um, starting off, kicking off, I just got like little notes here. 3 p.m., you're going to start off at Ebenezer Baptist Church in downtown Atlanta. So we want to make sure people are out there welcoming the bus and giving you guys a good old southern welcome. And um, at 5 p.m. at Plaza Fiesta, um, which is located on Buford Highway in Atlanta, Georgia, we will be having a press conference and rally. Um, so we have, you know, quite a range of events. We hope that we are able to get out the Asian American community as well as everybody else to support our um, efforts and support all your guys' efforts. And thank you so much for, you know, getting on a bus, traveling around. I don't even like to fly that often, so I can imagine what you guys are, are doing out there on these buses. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And we really want everyone to stay vigilant and let your congressional leaders know that immigration reform needs to happen now. We need to provide a clear path to legalization and citizenship for all immigrants. Um, the process should be inclus inclusive, workable, affordable, and humane. Uh, again, let's fix this broken system and keep on doing what you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Rihanna. And I, I think you hit the nail on the head. You know, I, I, as we continue on forth and. Um, one of the, the questions that we had from a, a, a Twitter is, you know, if you, when you call your members of Congress, what can you do or what steps can you take? And one of the things I want to do want to share that comes right off the Fast for Families website at fastforfamilies.org, that's fast for, number four, families.org, is that you can call your representative with the number that's available on the website. Um, it is, this number here, it is 866-691-9212. You can call this number, it'll directly connect to your member of Congress uh, and the message is clear. The American people want to see immigration reform passed. An overwhelming 70%, as we've done many, many different polls, support the issue. Now is not the time to play politics, or uh, now is not the time to uh, hide behind party lines. And we're seeing it that um, uh, American people uh, across different parties, different religions, different backgrounds, different race, different languages, support immigration reform because it affects their families. And if it doesn't directly affect their families, um, it, it it's, it's a calling for this humanitarian issue that families have been separated and deported. Um, you know, today alone, we're already, uh, we know that there are already a thousand families who have been separated uh, under this broken and unjust system. And we hear it, and we hear from leaders like DJ, uh, APA leaders, and, and Maria and Teresa, that this issue is not a time to be idle. It's an urgency of now. Um, and we're anticipating um, uh, to be joined by Congresswoman Judy Chu, who's been a, a champion on this issue for our communities. Uh, but we know that we need many more champions in Congress, that we can't have anyone um, um, say that they're supported but not take action. Not taking action and only verbally saying you support it is just the same as um, of not, not, uh, and not supporting it at all. And we really need our uh, champions on, on the Hill like Judy Chu to be able to move this forward. And now it's the time for Speaker Banner. So please continue to tweet your questions at uh, with hashtag ACT fast pray, especially for the speakers on this, as well as for Hedju and myself. Um, I, I don't believe I got a chance to introduce myself and people are wondering who am I. My name is Diana Boy. I'm a Southern bus writer. I'm a solidarity faster who joined and fasted for eight days on the And I'm also affected by immigration reform. And I also wanted to, uh, is DJ or in, uh, uh, Gaya, is it? Do you want to uh, say a little bit? Yourself as you're on the bus? Kaya? Oh, hi, everyone. I'm Kaya. I'm, I'm from Grand Resource Center. And I just took this um, bus last Thursday from Champaign, Illinois, where I am studying now for. And it's a very great opportunity for me to join this bus because now I am, I have met more than about 200 people since I left my town. And it was very touching to listen to people's real voice who support immigration reform and as DJ tweeted this morning there was a mom with seven children who 
said, speak, spoke out that she doesn't want her beautiful rainbow to be separated each other. So I'm learning a lot, and thank you so much for having me, um, giving me this opportunity to stay here. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you so thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you continue to do so. The bus will continue on. Um, and as, as Elsie mentioned earlier, you can join the, the fast on Wednesdays. Um, and I think something that has come up a lot is, you know, what is a fast and, and, and what is the purpose and how, to, how does it serve in this cause? I just want to take this time to see if, uh, if DJ can share a little bit what the fast has meant to you and uh, to, to see, encourage more folks to, to join us, especially on Wednesdays as they're calling their members of Congress. Yes, uh, we like to really uh, ask everybody to join us every Wednesday. It can be a uh, one day or it can be a one meal fast. Uh, as we fast, you know, we can really understand the you know pain of family separation. But also, as we fast, it will reaffirm our commitment uh, for immigration reform. Uh, but also I think that will give us an opportunity to be united, uh, all of us. Uh, imagine, you know, on every Wednesday, uh, millions of people are fasting and pray for our family. I think that will create a huge moral power, and I believe they will move uh, our speaker and our house leadership and minds and heart so they can really see this is a... Uh, you know, a people's issue, and we have a moral crisis, so they have to do uh, some action. Uh, they have to fix the uh, broken system and find a solution. But also, we like to really, you know, act. We call it fast and act. Uh, you know, not only the fast, but also we really need to remind and tell our Congress member, you know, they have to really play leadership and pass the immigration law so our people, our family, our community, we do not live in fear. We live with dignity and respect and we can contribute and this is our home. So we need a, a immigration law. So that's what we are really asking everybody to join us fast and act. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, DJ. Uh, we're getting word that the Congresswoman will join us in, in just a moment. So we're anticipating that as we're counting down and I know uh, the folks who are watching this are anticipating it too. So thank you so much. Continue to tweet at us. I also um, um, for, forgot to, to really plug it in for our two uh, local speakers uh, from API Vote in Michigan. So at APIA uh, Vote MI uh, is where you tweet at Teresa Trang, who's the president, and then Maria Adams with uh, ALAC. So at AALAC underscore GA in Georgia. Please do continue to tweet and follow as they uh, push on forward with the work uh, locally on the ground. Um, and, and we're finding out that there are actually uh, a lot of APIs in the South. I actually myself met uh, a young uh, Korean American who was in Florida, but her family's from North Carolina, and had not been really in contact with other APIs, especially those who are undocumented, and, and was really scared to tell her story, and had just recently uh, broke the, the news to her younger sister that they're undocumented, who didn't know, and she's entering, she's about to graduate high school and not knowing what her future's going to look like, and, you know, and being worried that their family could be deported, and they've been here for, uh, for quite a bit, and so I think those are the kind of fears that no one wants to live with, um, and, and as DJ has mentioned, as everyone here has mentioned, now is the time, and so there's so many different kinds of stories. We had a question earlier um, from at D-L-E-R underscore Y-U-A-N Yuan, who asked if there are also Chinese uh, people who involved in the fast for families, and I believe there have been. I, I, I want to turn it over to DJ and other folks um, to just share if, what, what kinds of different APIs have been affected by this issue or, been a, or a part of Pass for Families. <laughs> Does anybody want to take uh, the question? Yeah, maybe, you know, uh, Teresa and then uh, Ayla, Georgia, they can also share something too. Uh, one thing I can share is, I remember we had a one uh, Japanese-American third generation, she shared her story about her great-great-father uh, her great-great-father came to this country and live and work hard uh, as a Japanese-American, but during that time, 
uh, her great great father, you know, could not buy the land, uh, could not buy the home, and could not even get naturalization because he was just Asian. So he, she shared uh, because of her ancestor went went through whole discrimination and live as a second class citizenship. We as an Asian American, this whole pass to citizenship, and no one should live as a second class American. She knows so well what it means. So this legalization and pass to citizenship is really important to Asian American community because our ancestors, they live as a second class American. So no more second class citizenship in this country and everybody is equal. So I just wanted to kind of share that story. Yeah, and I just want to share, uh, in Michigan, we have a very large South Asian American population who, um, you know, come to the United States primarily through uh, work visas that um, oftentimes when, when one parent comes to the United States and tries to bring over family members, there's, the backlogs make it very difficult for those families to be reunited. And um, the way that, the, that some, some employers utilize the visa system to exploit uh, workers um, is is very real in our South Asian American community. So that's a that's a community that we don't often think about or talk about, um, but they're very much a part of this uh, experiencing um, ramifications of a broken system. And I just want to share too. I think. Oh, is that DJ? Go ahead, DJ. No, no. I, I just said thank you. And I think that the issue itself, when we think about comprehensive immigration reform, um, we, we think about the 11 million undocumented uh, folks who live in this country in the shadows in fear of detention and deportation. We have, in our community alone, 2 million people who are waiting to reunite with their families. Some have been waiting, as some of you have mentioned, for close to 20 years now. Um, and we also have stories of workers who come from uh, the Philippines um, um, who have been trafficked here in India, who have been trafficked here through uh, a temporary visa worker programs um, and subjected to abuse and exploitation and also living in detention and, and deportation. And we've heard those stories from Louisiana uh, in the south uh, to uh, teachers in Baltimore. And I think there are things that we need to really expose. And when we talk about our API community, it, they are also have been a part of it. And, and, um, and this is why we need comprehensive immigration reform to pass so that we can close these loopholes and, and at least stop the amount of injustice that happens um, at this time. Um, so actually, you know, I, I, I feel like we've been seeing head juice <laughs> on here, and I just wanted to, to give a moment and pause and see if she wanted to share her experience thus far as she has joined us in the past three days of being the Executive Director of Korean uh, Resource Center and Executive Board Member of NACASEC. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Hijo. I'm from Korea Resource Center in Los Angeles, California. And I, uh, I've been with the uh, best for families first for only for two days now, but uh, I feel like it's been about two months already because there are so many events and there are so many people I meet with and I heard so many stories of our uh, the communities and the, the different uh, stories and uh, last night we visited uh, the uh, African American Church there, and uh, we the, the pastor told us that the God didn't create the the races. The God just created the man. So we all are human being and same people. So um, uh, through this bus tour experience, I feel like we connect each other and we can. Uh, with more uh, power among us and we will be ready for uh, our the future. So thank you for all your hard work and see you some someday together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hiju. Um, and, and as people are tweeting, I just want to give a shout out uh, to, to We Belong Together, who has been a campaign um, really highlighting and uplifting the voices of immigrant women and children affected by comprehensive immigration reform. And as, if you all don't know it already, they've been doing this month-long fast where different women have been taking on a 24-hour fast throughout this month. And actually, on April 7th through the 9th, um, there will be uh, over 100 women who will descend on the uh, National Mall 
uh, too fast for 48 hours and continue to uplift the voices of uh, women and children. So I invite you to check out We Belong Together and join if you can uh, in solidarity or if you're affected by it uh, to, to also continue on. And I just also, it's a part of the Fast for Families effort um, and, and so it's part of the uh, movement that we're having towards as we're hearing towards the end of the bus tour on April 9th in Washington, D.C. Um, so at this time, I, I just wanted to open up uh, to continue submitting your questions. We have wonderful speakers who are on here uh, taking their time out, and we're anticipating to meet them, especially the local folks, tomorrow. Uh, so please use the hashtag ActFastPray, um, and please keep sending them in as we're waiting for Congresswoman Judy Chu. I think one of the things that has, has really come up is uh, whether it would happen this year. And I think a lot of people have uh, been feeling as if you're wondering if it's going to happen. And it absolutely can happen. It should happen. But we do need more of community members to continue to apply the pressure onto Congress. Call your Congress member. It does make a difference. When they hear from you, they're accountable to you uh, making that call. Uh, for anyone who's been on this, uh, who, a speaker, if you can share your experience with a congressional member or what have you done so far to, to really urge um, uh, the passage of comprehensive immigration reform. I just want to open up um, to if anyone can share the experience of, of how that's been like. Because even for myself, the first time I did it, um, you know, I, I wasn't sure what I was doing. But once you, you know, get in the group of things, I think it becomes apparent that it does really matter, and, and they do need to hear from us. Okay. So, Teresa. So, um, I, I think that you know. Like many other people have already mentioned, um, the importance of sharing our stories. Um, I think when I've had meetings with uh, congressional leaders over the last year, it's really been about um, telling them why this matters to me and my family and th therefore our community. Um, and I think it's really hard for your leaders to say, well, that doesn't matter because your truth matters, your story matters. Um, and I think speaking from that personal experience is, is really important for for those leaders to hear. Um, and then to, to not just share that story, but encourage other people to, to tell their stories. And then hold hold your elected officials accountable. Um, I think oftentimes they, you can leave those meetings um, and feel like you know, you're know you not really sure what's going to happen, but very, be very clear about what you're asking and really urge them and keep calling them and, and demand and hold them accountable to, to making some movement on immigration reform. It's not scary. Everyone can do it. Right, right. Thank you so much, Teresa. It's not scary. Everyone can do it. So can you. Uh, so, so please use the number that we have featured in the FastForFamilies.org website and, and make those calls to congressional members. Um, I'm getting word that our congresswoman has joined us, and I noticed a little bit of technical difficulty. So I'm wondering if there's some audio that's coming through um, as we see if the congresswoman is on, Representative Judy Chu. Representative Judy Chu? which I believe is uh, under court. Still, uh, <laughs> technical difficulties are still helping me. Oh. All right. All right, here we go. Hello, Congresswoman. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I also want to give you a uh, hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining the API uh, Google Hangout as part of the Fast for Families, uh, um, a bus tour across America. Thank you so much for, for joining us. You've been a champion for our community, especially on immigration reform. I'm also proud to be a constituent of your district and to have someone like you who's accessible, who's hearing our community stories and, and raising those concerns on the Hill is, is it's been such a, uh, a great honor and we're really proud to have you on. I just want to turn it over to you at this time, uh, Congressman Judy Chu, and, to, and please do tweet at her, at Rep Judy Chu. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sorry it was delayed because we had uh, votes just now, but uh, we finished it. And, uh, of course, I rushed over to the camera so that I could be with you. Uh, thank you, Marie and Teresa, for joining me on this Google Hangout. I'm thrilled that Diana, Eliseo, and, of course, DJ Yoon are joining us from the road. All of your efforts show our nation that 
immigration is not only a Latino issue, it's an Asian American issue. Actually, it's a, an issue for all of America. And APIs demand comprehensive immigration reform now. Last year, DJ, Eliseo, Lisa, Christian, and Rudy captured the attention of our nation by fasting for weeks on end to place uh, their attention on the injustices of our broken immigration reform. I was so inspired by, by what I saw. Uh, my fast lasted 24 hours. Uh, it was a fast of solidarity. I can only imagine what they endured as they fasted for 22 days. Well, it's been almost nine months since the Senate passed its bipartisan comprehensive immigration bill. And it's been five months since uh, I joined four other colleagues to introduce H.R. 15, the bipartisan House version of the bill. The bill already has 199 co-sponsors, both Republican and Democrat. We know that if H.R. 15 were put to a vote today, between the co-sponsors it already has and the Republicans who pledge support for comprehensive immigration reform, the bill would pass the House. And yet, House Republicans refuse to bring the bill to the floor for a vote. We know that there are 199 Democrats. We know there are about 26 Republicans and that is far in excess of what we need which is 218 people to vote for the bill. And we need to have this uh, bill brought to the floor because we have to stop many things including a deportation crisis that's ripping families and communities apart. Every day without reform means 1100 more deportations, thousands permanently separated from their family, um, and um, uh, it uh, means that we need to have also a permanent legislative fix. And I, I also knew, know that we have to do something now to stop the bleeding. Recently, President Obama announced a review of the Department of Homeland Security's immigration enforcement policies. I support these efforts and We'll work with my colleague to ensure that the president does what he can to stop the unnecessary separation of families. The participants and supporters of Fast for Families know how critical family unity is. Families are the best safety net of all time. They support one another. They help one another independent of government resources. If one gets sick, the other will take care of them. If one loses her job, others will support them. And yet, from 2009 to 2012, the U.S. deported nearly 215,000 immigrants just from Asia and Pacific Islander backgrounds themselves. And it separated thousands of families here in the U.S. That's unconscionable and has to stop. That's why we have to continue to push for a permanent fix to our immigration system. Only Congress can provide a path to citizenship for the 11 million. That's why in the coming days, we are moving forward with a discharge petition on H.R. 15. We need to force this vote on the floor. We need 218 signatures from members of Congress. That is why your tour around the country is so important. The discharge petition will give opponents of immigration reform another chance to do the right thing and bring a bill to a vote. Only public pressure can convince Republicans to act and sign the petition. That's why I am so grateful for allies like DJ and other advocates in the Fast for Families movement. We need to lift up the stories of families caught in our current immigration backlog and those impacted by our arbitrary deportation system. We need a chorus of voices from every corner of the country <coughs> to cry out for a reform that will keep families together. We can't take no. <coughs> we can't take no for an answer. Thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman. Thank you. Thank you. Something that has, has, has come up is um, what can the community do as a region? <laughs> sharing your stories and, um, and already our speakers have, have shared what's happening on the ground and from Georgia to Michigan as, as DJ has shared 
what he's been hearing across the country, moving toward uh, across the north. Uh, so, um, so Congresswoman, what, what what can the API community do? Well, there are Republicans that have indicated their support for comprehensive immigration reform. But what we need to do is to make sure that they put their signature where their mouth is and that they sign this petition. We want to put more and more pressure on the Republicans to do something. Um, and really what we want to do ultimately with this discharge petition is to, to force the speaker to put something on the floor. I think that the API community could look at the district with the uh, with the largest numbers of APIs in that district, uh, and so going around to those particular districts would be really great uh, because they would be the ones that uh, would at least be the most conscious about the API population and hopefully be concerned about the vote that uh, the API community might or might not give them. And by the way, there was um, two very important pieces of information today. I must tell you, there was a poll that came out, and it said that over 70% of Republicans want comprehensive immigration reform. Now, 72% of the total population wants it. We know that. We know that uh, Americans uh, do want comprehensive immigration reform, but it was a revelation to me that over 70% of Republicans want comprehensive immigration reform. The other very, very important piece of information that came out today was the report by the CBO, uh, the Congressional Budget Office, that said that H.R. Uh, 15 would do something that Republicans are always saying they want to do, which is reduce the deficit. And what the CBO said is that the uh, bill will reduce the deficit by $900 billion over the next 20 years. That is enormous. And so those are the arguments, I think, that we should be taking to those Republican Congress members. Thank you so, so much, Congresswoman. And, and to share also that, you know, with this bus tour, we've visited different uh, offices from both sides of the aisle. Um, so this really has been an effort to really engage in a dialogue with, with both parties uh, and, and representatives of both parties. And I think you're absolutely right that if there are uh, 26 Republicans who do support comprehensive immigration reform, that we hope that they continue to urge their colleagues to, to, to do so and to really put their uh, really put it into action because in not doing anything is, is, is almost the same as, as not supporting immigration reform. Um, and, and we're urging that. I, I also want to open up to our speakers in case uh, with the Congresswoman as we are receiving questions from uh, those who are watching live with the hashtag act fast pray. So I want to open up any speakers when I gave the Congresswoman at this time. Or Congresswoman, do you have any uh, questions for us or things that you would want to hear from us? As you, unfortunately, I know you were um, in the discharge position, but anything that you wanted to, to know from us as well? Well, I did want to tell you that we are going to be kicking off the discharge petition tomorrow. We're going to have a press conference on the steps of the Capitol, and we're going to uh, march over to the uh, floor of Congress and start signing. Uh, and uh, we really anticipate you coming. In fact, I've been talking it up uh, everywhere that I go, speaking about the Fast for Families bus tour that you are doing. And we are looking forward to you coming into Washington, D.C. on April 9th, uh, at which time we're going to, uh, to, to uh, close up the, the petition and present it uh, and uh, make sure that uh, there is national publicity to this, to this effort. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. And, and this is the kind of uh, thing where it just shows how much you've been a champion work for our community. So thank you so much for that. And we've also sent a call to action for uh, API members to join Wednesdays uh, to fast as we reflect and, and renew our spirits uh, on, on this issue. And, and I know that you have done so in solidarity. And so we're hoping that uh, more folks will join in uh, on Wednesdays as well as we're gearing towards uh, April 9th, um, winding down the bus tour. 
as well. And I've also mentioned about We Belong Together, the All Women's Fest is happening on the National Mall from April 7th to 9th as also connected to Fast for Families efforts. Um, so there's a lot of action activities that are going on, um, and, and people can till, still continue to do so uh, to make sure they check out FastForFamilies.org um, and continue to follow uh, all of the speakers on Twitter, social media, uh, and, and anticipate the, uh, new breaking new developments as it's happening, um, especially at Vote Tomorrow and here on 4th to April 9th. So if there's anything else I wanted to, to be able to have this opportunity to close out, any closing remarks on the Google Hangout, uh, and really have our community continue to uh, move forward and, and take those actions and get to work. Closing remarks? Hey, from BJ, our fearless leader. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> and from Teresa and Maria. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I, I think that we've given a lot of um, actionable items for people to do. Um, and so we really want to encourage our community to move. And as the Congresswoman said, you know, put pressure from from all corners of, of the nation. Make sure that we call and we, we hold our elected officials accountable to the things that we want in our community. And Congresswoman? Uh, I want to thank you for having this Google Hangout and for all your activities in doing the Fast for Families uh, uh, bus tour. You are very, very inspirational to us, and let's make sure we get comprehensive immigration reform done. Thank you so much, everybody. Yes, we can. We will see victories for our families, and continue to follow Fast for Families on Twitter um, and the website, fastforfamilies.org. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Congresswoman. Thank you. See you tomorrow. <laughs>